China is hard at work on the most significant water diversion project ever attempted to go against the flow of nature. China plans to transport freshwater to its arid northern industrial population centers by digging thousands of kilometers of artificial canals, aqueducts, and tunnels, some of which will have to traverse physical mountains. This video will examine China's contentious South to North Water Diversion Project, including its cost, justification, and the benefits, if any, it will bring to the Chinese people. China's terrain has been a boon and a bane to the country since ancient times. Much of eastern China has been continuously populated by human civilizations for thousands of years thanks to the Yangtze and Yellow River systems, which run from west to east. And because there are fertile floodplains there virtually all year round, the land has supported China's burgeoning population. The Yellow River Valley in China is one of the world's most extensive and reliably improved stretches of farmland. On the other side, the northern and western regions of the country are either arid or hilly. Much of China's land to the northwest is uninhabitable and infrequently populated due to its location in harsh environments, such as the Taklamakan and Hagobi deserts in the north and the unforgiving, towering vistas of the Himalayas and the Tibetan Plateau. An excellent illustration is that 94% of China's population lives east of this line, an imaginary line that splits China into two distinctly different halves. For centuries, Beijing and the cities to its north have served as China's economic, cultural, and political epicenter. With China's population and economy exploding in the mid-20th century, Necessities like water were increasingly scarce in the country's interior. Groundwater has been essential to the survival of northern cities like Beijing residents for quite some time. However, this freshwater source was quickly depleted due to burgeoning urban and industrial demand. As the adjacent Gobi Desert has grown, so has the number of dust and sandstorms, making the situation much worse. Each year, the desert reclaims an area of grasslands, as large as 3,600 square kilometers, or almost twice the size of Luxembourg. As mentioned above, human actions, including deforestation, climate change, and decreasing subsurface water sources, significantly contribute to desertification. There was growing concern in the early 1950s that northern China might run out of water to meet the needs of its people. Northern cities expanded at a time when available water supplies were rapidly decreasing. China had to devise a plan to keep hundreds of millions of people alive in a region that rarely had enough water. In 1952, People's Republic of China founder Mao Zedong offered to transport water from the south to the arid northern areas of China to alleviate the growing water deficit in the north. Water is plentiful in the south, but scarce in the north he was quoted as saying, it's acceptable to borrow a small amount if necessary. After years of planning and investigation, the country's state council endorsed Mao's vision in 2002, 50 years after his death. The South North Water Transfer Project is the proposed name for the massive undertaking that seeks to divert freshwater from the south to the water poor north through a network of interconnected aqueducts tunnels, reservoirs, and dams. The project would involve constructing three major canal systems, the Eastern Canal, the Central Canal, and the Western Canal. Beginning in Yangzhou, the Eastern route follows a significant tributary of the Yangtze River, the water for the world's longest artificial waterway, the Jinghang Grand Canal, is pumped from the Yangtze River through a vast but aging pumping station. The water then travels down a tunnel into the ground to reach the other side of the Yellow River. Finally, a network of aqueducts carries the water to the coastal city of Tianjin, located northwest of Beijing. The whole length of the eastern leg of the project is about 1,100 kilometers. The eastern route's construction began in 2002, with freshwater delivery anticipated as early as 2013. However, this was put back by more than four years due to several building delays. As of 2017, fresh water has reached Tianjin, providing as many as 10 million residents with direct benefits. 
The volume of fresh water is projected to be 1 billion cubic meters per year. Compared to the mega project's eastern route, which already had pre-existing infrastructure to divert water, the center route had none. Because of this, building along this path was much more difficult. Danjangku Reservoir is the jumping-off point for the center route. It was necessary to raise the Danjangku Dam by as much as 15 meters so that water could flow downstream and to the north without encountering any resistance. This allowed the water level in the reservoir to rise high enough to bypass the requirement for pumping stations along the canals and aqueducts. Unfortunately, more than 300,000 people had to be uprooted from their homes because of the Danjangku Dam renovations in order to make space for the new canals and the expanded reservoir. Besides these natural waterways, the central route consists of artificial canals and aqueducts that serve as a highway for elevated and underground rivers across the Chinese central plain. The central route includes the famous 12-kilometer long Xia Aqueduct, which crosses the river above ground. At long last, the central route enters the nation's capital, Beijing, over 1,200 kilometers in length. Building on the central route was completed in 2014. Nearly a third of the Han River's total flow was redirected after completion. Since so many people in the region depended on the Han as their primary source of potable water, this was a significant issue. The Chinese government, therefore, announced the construction of a large underground tunnel in July 2022 to provide the required water. The Three Gorges Dam, the Han River, and the major road leading to Beijing would be linked by a tunnel stretching a full kilometer below the Earth's surface. This tunnel will be the longest and deepest artificial canal ever constructed when finished. In 2030, the central route will carry as much as 12 cubic kilometers of water per year, equivalent to around a third of the Three Gorges Reservoir's total capacity. The western route of China's South-North Water Transfer Project is still in the planning stage. Unlike the earlier routes, it's the hardest to build out of the three options available. Through the Qinghai Tibet Plateau, which is around 3 to 5 km above sea level, the western route proposes to construct a network of waterways and tunnels to link the Yanks and Yellow Rivers. This project is exceedingly challenging due to the area's topography and environment. Furthermore, the western route's path would necessitate engineers practically carving mountains to traverse the challenging terrain. The western route is anticipated to be finished by the year 2050. If the western route were built, it could serve approximately 100 million people. Unofficially, the western route has also been proposed to redirect water from China's transboundary rivers, such as the Brahmaputra and the Mekong, which flow via India and Southeast Asia. India has voiced alarm over China's potential exploits on the Brahmaputra in the past, even though this has never been the stated plan for the project. They were concerned that the Indian government would be vulnerable to Chinese river diversion attempts. However, the Chinese government sees the South-North Water Transfer Project, which is still in progress, as a significant success. According to Chinese state media, around 140 million people in water-poor parts of China will benefit from the project. However, the proposal is being met with mixed reviews from local and provincial administrations in China. For one, upstream southern provinces like Sichuan and Hubei are against the plan to reroute the Yangtze's flow to the north. For them, the development of the western route of the project would be devastating to the region's water security and hydropower industry. Alternatively, western provinces like Gansu and Qinghai hope that building the western route will bring much-needed socio-economic and agricultural stability to their areas. Though the South-North Water Transfer Project may benefit some northern Chinese towns, it has nonetheless aroused widespread alarm among local and international environmentalists. All of the waterways in this project are artificial and flow in the opposite direction of China's natural river patterns from west to east. The building of the canal has redirected the flow of water from hundreds of rivers, causing some of them to dry up entirely. Because of the massive size and volume of water being transferred by the water transfer project, 600 rivers have been lost during its construction. 
In addition, sewage and industrial pollutants have found their way unintentionally into these artificial waterways. Cities like Xi'an, which have a large industrial sector, dump their trash into the Han River, which flows directly into the Danjiangku Reservoir and then onto the Central Route, which ultimately goes to Beijing. Many people, businesses and industries dispose of their rubbish in these artificial rivers because they pass through hundreds of cities and villages nationwide. Experts were concerned that there would be a significant outflow of seawater from the Yellow Sea into the local water supply of coastal Chinese communities when the Yangtze's normal flow was cut short by as much as 36% during the opening of the project's central channel. If the Yangtze's flow continued to decline as more water was diverted into artificial rivers, the Yellow Sea's salt water might go back as far as the man-built canals. If something like this happens, it may cause a water shortage over the entire country. Another major environmental worry is why the Western Route has been in the design stage for so long. The Western Route is expected to pass through some seriously mountainous territory in China. Therefore, tunneling there is part of the official design. There is a risk that landslides and environmental damage will occur as a result of building the Western Route. Moreover, the Qinghai Tibet Plateau is a quake-prone area. Building a crucial megaproject in this location might cost the Chinese government billions of dollars in the event of a severe earthquake. The North-South Water Transfer Project has accomplished two of its three proposed routes as of today. The ultimate price tag for the undertaking is predicted to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $62 billion. However, the Chinese government will soon require billions more to maintain more than 3,000 kilometers of canals, aqueducts, dams, tunnels, and reservoirs, so this estimate needs to be revised. Despite what it did, this project has yet to accomplish its primary purpose of bringing potable water to northern China. Thanks for watching. If you want more videos like this one, make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel to never miss out on any of our videos.